Hello you guys. So welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, I have not really made a whole lot of like personal videos. So I'm gonna go ahead and just like jump right on in this thing. So I wanted to make this video tonight. I actually just went live on Facebook about this and um, I really just wanna go ahead and just jump right on in and just share some things with you guys that I've kind of been going through personally that has completely just kind of transformed things in my world and in my life right now in terms of my personal life and my business life. So I'm just gonna jump right on in. So, you know, over the last few days, I have had like a whirlwind of emotions and things that have taken place. And I'm so thankful for it. You know, the, the process is not always pretty. It's not always pretty, but it's so necessary for you to really kind of walk into your purpose and so that God can take you to new levels and um, new things so that he can ultimately get the glory and so that you can do the things that he truly, truly needs for you to do. And he needs for you to be in a space that you can handle these things because it's going to come with hard times. It's going to come with difficulties, but he has to prepare you for, you know, each new season. So um, I was, you know, basically over the last few months, let me give you guys a little bit of a backdrop. So over the last few months, I really, really have just been really trying to survive. It's been complete survival mode, like no lie. And it literally had become a way of life for me. So um, back in, well, the last school year, the last two school, school years, I've been working as a pediatric occupational therapist in the school district. And um, I've been also working my business full time as well. And have like a pretty good like a pretty nice size team and so as a leader of a team of people um who are amazing and who are active and who are working you know i i want to be like a present leader you know i want to be there for my team so i found myself like really juggling you know a lot of different things and you know that's just how it goes but i wasn't really managing things and doing things the right way and really making sure that i keep god first so I was like all over the place, like super unorganized. And I stopped working, like I retired from my job um, back in May, but I kept up the same energy. And you know, it was just like, oh, you gotta just keep grinding. You can't slow down. You gotta keep that momentum, you know, team no sleep. And you know, um, the harder you grind, the harder, you know, the better your business is gonna be. And, um, you gotta work, 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 work. You can rest later, but right now you gotta work, 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 work. And so, and basically you guys, you know, I have a Facebook page where I do a monthly scripture reading um, and or writing plan. And every month, every morning, I post the scripture for the day and a summary of what that, you know, what the Holy Spirit placed into my heart. And so over the last few months, like I kind of been slipping on it a little bit and I'm like, yo, like, what are you doing? Like, this is your ministry. You got to pull it together. But again, it's like one of those things where I really didn't have much discipline for it. And at one point I was kind of like, well, maybe this part of my ministry is coming to an end. There are like over 600 people in this group um, who look for these posts every single day, people from all over the world who have reached out and talked about how much this has impacted them. And here I am thinking, because basically, I just got too busy. Yeah, too busy to do what God told me to do. And that's not a good place to be. And so um, that's kind of where I've been. I've been super unorganized, losing everything. Like if it wasn't on me, attached to my head, attached to my body, I was losing stuff. Um, and just really, really having a hard time, like, making just resting and slowing down and filling up my cup and although i was doing my self-care you know i was doing all of these things the one thing that i was not doing was resting one day out of the week okay so i talked to um, one of my newer friends her name is rachel shout out to rachel and um she basically you know we were just talking and she said well how's everything going you know how are things with you and your team what are you guys doing? And, you know, I was talking to her about how, you know, we wake up early in the morning and do these early morning power hours at 4.45 in the morning. And she was just like, what? Like how? What? Okay. Okay. All right. So when are you spending time with God? And I was like, yeah, about that. I, I'm kind of just fitting it in, you know, wherever I can. 
And although I know better, I felt very guilty because I know better. So if you know better, you do better. So why are you why are you not making that time for God? Like you know you used to I used to literally wake up first thing in the morning. Even if it was a Saturday, y'all, I would set up an alarm for 6 a.m. or 6.30 a.m. It's been so long, I can't even tell you guys like what time it was. That's how bad it was or how bad it's been. But it would be early in the morning. I would wake up, do my Bible reading. And if it was a day where I was sleeping in a little bit, I'd go back to sleep. But I made sure that I woke up and did that every single morning. I wouldn't miss a day. Um, I would really be in God's presence. And then sometimes it got to be like habitual where it wasn't really like intentional. It wasn't intentional time. It was just like, oh, I need to do this because I said I was going to do it. So I need to just get it out there. And that, it just didn't feel right. It didn't feel right, but I was so out of control, so out of touch with what it was that I needed to do that I could not figure it out. I was so busy doing things that I was not actually spending time with God and doing the things that he needed for me to do. Like truly, truly needed for me to do. So um, that was the first check. She was like, well, you're not spending your time with God first in the morning. She really talked about how, you know, you need to go in his presence. You need to put on some worship music, you know, um, pray and, you know, do your devotional, whatever it is that you do. But like 30 minutes. And I'm like, well, like I was doing like 10, 15, you know, but I really do need to do more because what I was doing, it wasn't enough. Like I wasn't slowing down to actually hear the Holy Spirit speak to me. So I said, OK, that's that. And then she said, so when are you resting? And I was like, rest? What's that? Like, I'm not resting. We're pushing. We have momentum right now. We're doing good. The team is strong. But right now, you know, we are kind of slowing down a little bit because I think everybody's tired. You know, we've really been pushing since like November. I think everybody's getting a little bit tired. And she was like, yeah, you guys are tired. You're not resting. When do you rest? I was like, you know, try to go to bed a little bit early sometimes and, you know, I rest throughout the day sometimes too. She's like, no, you need a whole day. She's like, you need a Sabbath. You need to figure out what day during the week you're going to not do anything for your business. And that's time that you spend some extra time with God. You spend time with your family. You do things that make you happy. You rest. You fill your cup. Um, and I said, okay. And I have been thinking about that, you guys, but I really did not know how to implement that into my life. Like, I have been in this mode of, like, push, 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 push for so long that something like that just really did not make. Like, I couldn't wrap, like, I wanted it, but I couldn't wrap my head around it. I was like, well, you know, what if we lose momentum and people are going to need me? And she's like, you don't trust God. And I'm like, huh? I don't trust God. And I was like, no, you really don't because you're overcompensating. You're trying to do everything because you don't trust that God is going to do what he said he was going to do and fulfill those promises and do those things that, you know, you don't need to do. Like, you don't have to do it all. Why are you operating in your own strength 24-7? Like, allow God to move supernaturally in your life. So she told me to watch this video. Um, she also said that she told me about the pace of grace. And I was like, okay, I'll watch that video too. And she told me, she gave me a little assignment. It's about five, no, six videos that I needed to watch. And so she said, and today, I want you to go ahead and take a day, like today. I'm going to charge you to take a day today. And I was like, but it's the end of the month. Like, we have people pushing for promotion. It's like, yeah, I know. It's okay. You need to take today, though. And you need to hear from the Holy Spirit because right now you just, you're all over the place. You can't. You can't continue like this. So I took a day and I watched this video. And I just want to share like some things that I took away from this video, some different notes that I have. So in the Bible, God created the heavens and the earth in six days and he rested on the seven. So he intended for us to work six days and to rest for one. Um, and that can be found in Exodus 20, 8 through 13. On the seventh day, God rested, right? And so when you think about resting, this is what really got me, you guys. It's a commandment. Like, to rest is a commandment. To honor, honoring the, a Sabbath, honoring the Sabbath, that is a commandment. It's equivalent to murder and adultery and all of those things. Like, it's real. It's not an option. It's, it's 
a commandment. And so when you don't work, I go to work. That's what God says. When you don't work, that's when I go to work. And I was like, dang, I haven't been letting God work. Like, I've been trying to do it all. Like, that don't work. So um, if you want to live the life that I've called you to live, you have to follow the commandments. And that's one of them. Um, so elevation comes from God. And we have to trust him. We can't overwork our way to the next level. <clears throat> I love that. Um, the reasons why you have to rest is that, first of all, you know, it's a commandment. But, you know, another thing with resting is that it gives God the opportunity to move supernaturally on your behalf. If you're doing it all, when are you giving God the opportunity to move supernaturally in your life? If you're constantly going, 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 trying to do it all in your own strength. And then you'll provide. He'll provide double on the sixth day so that you'll be good on the Sabbath. So Jesus can do more for us in six days than we could ever do in seven. That's something that I really took away from this whole teaching. Um, and then on the Sabbath, if you do work on the Sabbath, if you do work seven days a week, God says, like, I'm not working on this day for you because you aren't supposed to be working. You're supposed to be spending time honoring me. So I'm not even going to bless what you're doing today because you have no business doing it. Like, that's good. That's really, really good. And so the Sabbath is the Lord's gift to you. That's his gift to you. Take it. He's telling you to take that day. But some of us cannot let go of control and allow him to really truly move on our behalf. Um, let me see. So if you don't, again, the same thing, if you don't trust God, you will try to do it all yourself. And it just boils down to being a trust thing. So the Sabbath allows you to rest and to not only rest, but be refreshed. Be refreshed so that you can be ready for your next week. You need to catch your breath. You need to rest. You need to catch your breath from the week before or that week that you've had. And just allow yourself to just get ready to just recreate and um, refresh and refocus. And he's God's serious about it. Like he's very, very, very serious about it. And he's super serious about your life and your purpose. And all of these things have to be, like if you're out of whack and if you are out of order, then you are messing with your life and your purpose. And God has a specific purpose for you and for your life. But if you're not resting and listening to him, how are you going to know what it is that God needs for you to do? And are you killing yourself or killing your purpose like are you doing either of those if you are not resting you are killing yourself and you are killing your purpose he'll provide if you honor him and then they talked about like unobserved sabbaths accumulate and he basically gave this this some um, example of this guy who was working like forever he was working forever. He never took a day off. And then he finally started honoring the Sabbath. It's like his, his job basically took him on a sabbatical. And they said, go take like 60 days. Go take 60, 60 days. And um, day 52, this guy came in and he was like, man, like I finally like feel like myself again. Like I feel good again. And... It's like, yeah, because you have been working for the last year. There are 52 weeks in the year, I believe. 52 weeks in the year. And, yeah, it's 52. And um, you finally have caught up. You owed 52. You owed 52 Sabbaths. And so on that 52nd day, you finally feel like you're back to yourself again. So those accumulate. 
And that was such a big eye-opening moment for me. And it just really, really put things into perspective for me. And it just made me think about like, if you're running and running and running and running, you know, you cannot, you cannot function like that. And you're not only impacting yourself, but you're actually impacting the people around you as well. And as a leader of our team, you know, I really had to take a step back and say, you know, what are you showing? What are you preaching? What are you teaching your team to do? What are you teaching them to do? They're not starting their day out with God because they're waking up at 445 in the morning. So that's out of order, first of all. So what are you really teaching them? And then you're teaching them that they got to grind, they got to work so hard, they got to do this and this and this, no days off, no team, no sleep, all of that. What are you doing? You know, like, how? when, when can you allow God to work in you supernaturally if you're constantly moving so fast like that? Like, what are you truly, truly doing? So, um, you know, Rachel, basically, I wanted to share those things with you because that video um, really changed my life. And I took two days off. The first day was done. Um, I spent some time with Jesus. I spent some time with my family. I spent some time by myself. It was ugly. I cried. I was frustrated. I was mad. I was angry. I was felt grace. I felt joy. I felt happiness. I felt peace. I felt all of these things in like the same day, like within hours, sometimes minutes of each other. And I needed it though. I needed this moment so, 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 so bad. And I'm so thankful for it. Um, and at the end of the day, the Holy Spirit said, yeah, you thought you were going to go back tomorrow, but I need you one more day. I need your attention just one more day. I need you to finish these videos. I need for you. You can't go back until you finish these videos. And I need to reveal some things to you of what you need to do for your team. And I haven't told you that yet because I need you to sit. I need you to sit a little bit longer because you're not, I'm not done with you yet in terms of this. And so another day went by. I told my team, you guys are going to be out another day. I know they didn't understand. They had no idea what was going on. And this is the person that talks about, oh, no matter what's going on in your life, you have to work your business still. Okay? That was me. That's me. And I felt like, no, it's going to be okay. At first, I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to seem like such a biggest hypocrite. And I was like, no, you got to do it. Don't worry about that. God is going to work that out. Your team is going to be fine. Do you trust him? You trust him? Okay. Do what you need to do. Do what he told you to do. So that's what I did. Um, and, you know, um, my life has been forever changed. My business has been forever changed. Um, another thing that she charged me to watch was this series from Pastor Todd called, Pace, uh, called Stride. And it basically talk like, talked about your um, pace of grace. And how when you are running, running, running everywhere, first of all, if you're running to something and you're supposed to be stopping to see something, you can't even stop and see it because you're too busy running. And then when you're, sometimes we're running, we are totally outside of God's grace. God is way back here and we're way up here like, I'm grinding, I got to get it done, I got to do this, I got to do that. And God's like, no, you really don't. So why are you out there doing that? Like, why are you doing, why are you doing so much? You're doing too much. I didn't tell you to do that. Now, you need to come back here to me. And then also, when you're up here, guess what? You're, some People can't, that's not sustainable. First of all, you tire yourself out. Think of yourself on a treadmill. You're just running. Eventually, when you're on that treadmill, treadmill you're running, 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 running as fast as you can. You're going to get tired. And if you don't stop running, you're going to pass out. You're going to lose your mind. You're going to be stressed out. You're going to be tired. You're just going to be out of it. And I, that's how I was. I was totally outside of God's pace of grace. My team could not keep up with me. It was, and they didn't need to keep up with me. It wasn't right for them to keep up. Some of them could. Some of them could. But some of them were like, dang, like, how do you do this? How does this? How does this? And, and honestly, I had no business doing that. It was not the example that needed to be set. It just was not. And so then also I isolated myself. So I wasn't talking to like my friends and my family as much as I needed to. And I'm just out here all by myself. And then when I look around and I need somebody, it's like, oh, well, who am I going to call? You know, like literally, you guys, this is where I found myself. And so these two videos and this series of videos with the stride, it really kind of put things 
into perspective for me and it's like yeah what you're doing is awesome but it's not sustainable like what you're doing is not sustainable you're gonna get tired and you're gonna burn yourself out so why are you doing that um and stop walking stop working outside of the grace that god has given us and when you run into something, if you're running, 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 eventually you're going to run into something and it is damaging. If I'm running and I'm running and I'm running and I say I'm running towards, you know, I'm running from one house, one part of my house to the other. If I run into that wall, if I keep doing that over and over and over again, I'm eventually going to break my nose. I'm going to have bruises on my face. Or I'm going to have a busted lip or I'm going to have a black eye or whatever. That is damaging. Eventually, you have to stop running. And God did not run. In the Bible, it said Jesus walked here. Jesus walked there. Jesus walked here. It never said that Jesus ran anywhere. And if we're constantly running, 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 when do we have time to stop and listen to hear God? When do we have time to look around us and take lessons and um, learn from the different things that we're seeing or even seeing what's going on around us, period. Like if we're constantly running, when can we do that? So you miss so much when you run through a process and the lessons that you don't learn, they repeat themselves. So you can run all day, but eventually you're going to get slapped in the face and you're going to get pulled back and you're going to have to do it all over again because you didn't learn the lessons that you were supposed to be learning because you were too busy running. Like so good. Um, and if the and I love this, he said, if the enemy can't get in front of you to stop you, he'll get behind you to push you. And when he pushes you, he pushes you outside of that grace. That's so good, you guys. Um, when you run, you miss the moments where miracles happen. Miracles happen. When you walk and you allow God's supernatural powers to come over and work on your behalf. That's where miracles happen. That's where they happen. Um, you can see the things in your life that are dead or wrong when you're walking. You can see the things in your life that are dead or wrong when you're walking. If you don't stop running, you will never see the issues around you that need to be fixed you won't and that my my life is a perfect a perfect um my life over this last year is a perfect example of that i've been running so much i had no idea what i was really doing but the moment i stopped and i spent time with god and i had someone to check me and things got placed into perspective and i slowed down i was like oh my god I hear you, Lord. I, I totally hear you. Totally, totally hear you. Um, and Jesus didn't break his pace for anyone. He didn't run for anyone. So that story where, you know, the, the father, I forget his name. He had his daughter who was sick and she was dying. She was dying. And he was like, Jesus, like, hurry up. You got to come. And Jesus was like, you know, he was he had his own pace. He wasn't running. Like, he wasn't running there. He was walking. He was walking. And God was like, trust me. I got you. And at the end of the story, God saved his daughter. His daughter. So, you got to know that your pace is your pace. And you got to stick to it. Like, don't break your pace for anything. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Nothing is greater than Jesus. And then um, another thing is like, who told us that busy is better? Like that's something that we've just been taught. It's like busy is better, busy is better, the busy you are, the better it is. But and it's kind of like it's it's kind of like, well, how do I know if I'm too busy? If you made plans without God, you're too busy, and you're you cannot sustain that. You're running because you're trying to sustain those plans that are not meant for you to even have because that's not, those don't even align with God. Or you're running too fast and it's not sustainable and you're breaking your neck, going crazy, trying to sustain those things. 
and it's a cultural thing like it's something that we have to just realize that you know we're we're that's the generational thing you know a lot of times we hear that you gotta run you gotta run 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 faster you haven't reached your goal yet it's because you're not running fast enough run faster run faster and really god is like no that's not it you're running way too fast. You're not even able to pay attention to what it is that I need you to learn in this season. We think that running looks better. Like we think that it's just something that, oh, you know, we glorify that. Oh, she's grinding. She stays up every night. You know, she is putting in that work. Da, 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 da. She's a real MVP, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, <laughs> no. And this is so crazy because it's a culture. It's a culture. Um, and, and when you think about it, like what, what has running cost you? Like if you're truly running like a crazy person, what has that cost you? Has it costed you your family? Has it costed you your sanity? Has it costed you your health? I thank God. I was telling my friend Kelsey, I thank God so much for his grace because in this running, I could have lost my family. I could have gotten sick. But grace, God's grace is so amazing. And I'm glad I caught it when I did. And I'm able to fix it and make those changes. Because when you know better, you what? You do better. And then running is honestly a cover-up. It covers up the areas of your life that you're insecure about. It covers up those things that you're insecure about. And it honestly shows that, you know, your trust is actually in yourself. You want everyone to know that you're enough. You want to be like, you feel good when you're praised for running, running, running. Like, especially if you're somebody who struggles with self-esteem and self-confidence and those things, you may feel validated by people talking about you and praising you and stuff like that. When in reality, it's all a cover-up. Like, why are you really, truly doing it? So... Um, it's, this was like, this was so good. This was just so, so good. Um, you walk, God will direct your steps. You have to find his pace of grace. And I can walk at a pace that is sustainable. I can do that and I can still be successful. And honestly, you know, when I thought about, when I thought about this and I heard this message and I was just like, you know what, when I walk in God's pace, He's going to get the glory because he's going to have to move supernaturally on my behalf. If I truly do my part and allow God to do his, we say that, like, I'm going to do my part and let God do what I can't do. But do we really do that? Like, do we allow God to... Do we allow him to really, truly do that? Like, do we allow that? No, many times we don't. So it's a daily commitment. It's a prayer to say, God, help me find my pace of grace. That's been my prayer. Help me find my pace of grace. I want to stay in your pace. And that, you know, if you want to know if you are outside of your pace of grace, are you stressed out? Are you, do you take a day? Um, is your life totally out of whack? Are you unorganized? Are you sustaining yourself right now? Is is it that nobody else around you can keep up with you? Are you isolating yourself? You got to find your pace. You got to bring it back and find that pace of grace. A daily commitment, a daily prayer. Commit to walking with others around you. Um, it was something. Commit to walking with God every day. Commit to walk in your victory. Um I'm running because I want to look good. I prove that I'm enough because I thought I was missing a little bit. Just didn't, didn't trust you. Okay, yeah, that's that. So, so yeah, you guys, that's basically it. You know, I wanted to just share that with you guys. This really, truly has just totally changed my life. I know that this video is very, very different, but I just pray that it will really um, force you to think a little bit differently. I pray that you will implement the day of rest the day of, um, you know, just focus and refreshing and understand the spiritual piece behind that 
and know that if you are a leader in our company or a company similar to this or whatever you're doing even if you own your own business you know whatever it is that you're doing make sure that you understand that your choices impact your team's choices as well and what i did when i heard this message um i just said you know what i want my team to take a day off and most of them took a day off today and they've been texting me like oh my gosh i really needed this thank you so much for that video um and the video is um you can look it up a day off take a day take a day i believe that's it by pastor michael todd from transformation church and the other series is called stride from the same pastor michael todd and um you guys this just completely changed my whole world and i just pray that um it will help you guys and it will just really really just bless your spirit i thank you guys so much for watching my video i'm gonna just be bringing some new things to you guys it's something that i've always wanted to do but have been way too busy to do it and so now that i'm implementing some changes i'm gonna hold myself accountable to make sure that i make these videos and just so that i can get to know you guys a little bit more give you a glimpse into my world into my family's life my business um and hobbies all of those different things just really a total um look at what's going on over here in the kwaku world so i pray nothing but blessings for you guys i hope that you all have an amazing 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 week ahead and I pray again that this blessed at least just one person. And I hope you all have a good night. Bye.